And all right. And this is the uh, coding of the Unity engine. <laughs> We're just going to do some cat-like code. uh, cat coding. We're going to follow this story here on the internet, catlikecoding.com. And that is going to be amazing, right? Hopefully. So here's our Unity. We already started out a little bit. Um, <laughs> Good, let's see how it goes. Uh, where is the thing? Over here. Creating a mesh. Du -du 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 -du. Where's my music? Ah, oh, it's a little bit low volume. This is better. Du -du. Good. Now, procedural meshes. This is the uh, tutorial I want to follow. And uh, I think we already uh, made a little bit of code happen here good simple procedural mesh simple program <laughs> maybe i shouldn't rename the thingies right maybe i should just keep it simple hmm <laughs> um, simple procedural mesh should I rename it right just follow it from word for word and what's a nappy? Yeah. Good. A simple prop mesh. A simple procedural. So this was sort of for me. That's why I, why I just renamed everything. But let's keep it close to what is going on here. Good. Simple procedural mesh. And uh, save it. Unity might complain. Bum bum, compiling steps, running backend. Um, some of these things are, on go, are only going to go one time. Good. Also, scripts. Let's rename this. Simple procedural mesh. Good, just like the cat like told me. Um, enter it real quick. Nope, don't keep it in. Uh, then we're going to see if our editor is even set up correctly. Good, we got the inspector, we got the lighting. Um, I think I want this to look a little bit different. Good. <laughs> oh dear, let's go to the project settings and put them maybe here, right? Boom, boom, boom. So maybe that's too loud. <laughs> Good. Uh, graphics editor. Also, let's see. Hmm. Graphics. Da -da 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 -da. Editor. Default behavior. Unity remote. What is this? Cache. Prefab mode. Hmm. Enter play mode settings. Let's. Uh, Check this check mark. And what this will do is uh, it will speed things up. Good. Also, maybe I want to split this into something else. Also, maybe put it here. Good. Because then we have two windows. We're going to squish this here is all right big time inspector we got some lighting here wonderful <laughs> just <laughs> setting it up but uh, set it up however you want good simple residual runner behavior what is this doing requiring stuff good so that's what we put in before now this is the very beginning these are the first lines of code did not even uh, write them on stream but this is looking great. Mesh renderer, mesh filter. Isn't there something missing? Isn't there a mesh collider missing? <laughs> Maybe next time. Let's just follow along. I got a new mesh. Good, and we're naming it as well. Don't like this variable here. On the other hand, damn, boom, boom. If you do this, then 
<laughs> we have this mesh mesh duplication here. It's, uh, it's kind of confusing, to me at least. So that's why I like the cat-like coding. It's always quite slick. Right. So what do we need to do next? Is this all comprehensive? <laughs> I think it is very comprehensive. Um, when this thing gets enabled, <laughs> Fat Cat, good to see you. Fat Cat says, cat like coding, better than what I have, fat like coding. <laughs> that you have both. Fat Cat. Good. So on the enabling, let's go through this code. I think I just copy paste it. And if you develop your own style of coding, then you will immediately see if you just copy pasted something in. And that comes in very handy. Handy dandy. Good. Um, what? Wait, what? New mesh. Oh, this should not even be in a new line. Good. And then we're getting the component. How are you doing, Fat Cat? Everything all right? Everything cool? And we're going to see if that shows any errors, and it shouldn't. We barely did anything there. Good. Then we assign it to the mesh property of a mesh filter, yeah. Good, get component mesh filter mesh, boop. Mm hmm So that's how we just create a mesh. Nothing to report, Fat Cat? Good. No news is good news. And then automatically, it's gonna get put in here. None says none. But if we play and this is getting enabled. Oh, and we have a don't destroy on load because we have packages. Um, we want to get rid of the singleton because I despise singletons. Good. There was a way to go on about this. Um, inside the package? Uh, maybe. Maybe. So the problem is... This guy here somewhere <laughs> in the core. I think the debug update of where, where where might it be? Debug updater in the core. Runtime <laughs> debugging debug updater. This is the problem. Now we cannot we cannot mess with this. Now the very modern Unity, it uh, it makes this thing immutable. And that just means that it will restore itself when you uh, edit something. You could, for example, go into the update and just comment everything out. But then Unity is going to say, hey, this is immutable. So I did find out about this. Oh no, we got some... Oh, damn it. If I look for something... Gonna be bad, right? Um, get rid of... Debug... What's his name? Updater. Debug updater... And I did this on my other computer. So good thing I'm doing it again. Maybe this time I can remember how to do it. Get rid of debug updater. Unity. U R P. Right? Maybe. Good. Dun, 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 dun. No. <laughs> Yeah, this doesn't work. I tried this, it just doesn't work. No, the solution is not here. I tried to just put it in line and it just didn't work. New input system debug updater. How do we disable the debug menu? Um, maybe just in the settings, this could be. 
This could be the solution. Yeah, let's go into the settings then. Boom, 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 if we can find them. Uh, this does not seem right. Good, uncheck this box. You can enter the revision of both buttons in the group. Inspect a new HD render pipeline asset. Yeah, this is the HD one. Don't I have different settings? Oh, I, I never did this here, did I? Project settings? Graphics? URDP? Um, and they are the same settings I have open here. Oh. Good question. Strip, strip, strip. There's nothing I can do here. I thought I would get more settings. This is for my for my settings folder. Hmm. So maybe yes, maybe no. Shader variant log. What if I say all shaders? Do I get more options? No. Hmm. Rending layers default. This is nothing gonna do. We can new and clone. None! Ha ha ha! Scriptable render pipeline settings. Good. How we can how do we how do we make settings? Ah, I know. Create and settings. Bum 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 maybe. Some sort of shady very shader, shader graph. Status of a shader. Shader variant collection. Material. Oh, figuring this out all. All of yourself. Um, universal render pipeline settings. Configuring the pipeline. Creating a book. To create. In the editor, go to project. Right click on the Create. Rendering. URP pipeline asset. That's what I tried to do in the project window. Create a URP. Is this missing? Customer render texture. Rendering URP asset. Good. New universal render pipeline. Good, that's a good one. Why do we get two? Um <laughs> does not tell me. This is the data, this is the renderer. So what are we looking here for? Um this is for the asset. It's looking for the asset, so let's put it in. Change render pipeline will take a significant amount of time. We have the time. Relax. Good. Aha! Uh -huh, we have settings. That's good stuff. Do we have even more settings? No. Shaders ring. Shader shaders. Culling settings. Mm, include shader six. Some settings will not be used in a hitting. A scriptable render pipeline is in use. Wait, this one? That one? Good question. Now we got this. Layer of Fatmos instance version. Shader loading, log shader. Mm. This is not good enough. Let's play for a moment. Huh. Editor asset pipeline. <laughs> it is sleepy time. <laughs> It is leaving time for the fat cat. Good. We're listening to the lullaby in the playlist. That is why. Good. Edit project graphics. This is your asset you created. The various studies you made. Because you did switch your users of this. There's also a built in render pipeline. Good. Good, good, good. What if we look for the 
debug updater in the docs. No, that's not good enough. New HD render pipeline asset. New HRP render pipeline asset. New HD. This is the HD. So we click it directly. Ah, we click it directly. There we go. Good. And where are we? In the render pipeline supported features. Hmm, damn it. This does not look like there are any features here. I did get rid of it, I swear, on my other computer. Um, and in case you're wondering, uh, I'm playing and then there's a single here, the debug updater, and I do not want it. I just don't want it. I want to get rid of it. I don't want a singleton in my build at all. If the cat like coding is teaching me a singleton, then I will be very surprised. Because <laughs> I hate singletons. No, the renderer, maybe. Uh, rendering. Render path, shadows, post processing, overrides, compatibility. Render features. No features added. But this is a feature. I want to get rid of it. <sighs> URP has specifically looked for this. Disable unit debug canvas. Debug update object appears in hierarchy on play. Yep. That is exactly my problem. No, this does not work. And in case you're wondering why isn't you not know, just adding the line of code in here. I can show you that it does not work. I can show you. Copy. And on enable. Sure, on enable. When whenever. Whenever is fine. Good. And why is this wonkily over there? You better hone your skills. You better hone your skills. Good. Compiling the scripts. Wonderful. And we press play and it's still there. It's gone. <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> ah, so sorry about this. I think on my other computer I just found the check mark. But it's good to know. It's good to know. Um, crazy how I dismissed this because it didn't work for me. And now it does work. Maybe it's because on enable. Maybe the timing is is correct. If this was was an awake, let's see. On awake. Good. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, there you go. That's why it didn't work for me. The timing is crucial. Good. But I had a different solution, and I'm gonna look it up. I promise. Also, my window sounds. I'm into. I'm into mess with. Good window sounds. Where are they? Run sounds? No. Search. Where's my search thingy? Sounds. Change system sounds. Good. I just want to know where it is. Browse. Warhammer 40k. <laughs> oh, don't tell me it's in downloads. Huh? It doesn't show me where it is? Uh, then it must be in the systems folder. Oh. Windows. Windows just terrible. Good, let's go to C. If I can. Maybe even into Windows. Maybe even to System. I don't know. Mix Kit. Where do I have this from? Good, this is only going to take forever. Ba bum 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 bum. 
I know, I know it has nothing to do with unity. Yeah, this is terrible. Can I open another one? No items? So it's not in C? That can't be right. Mix kit. Do I have a, do I have to do a star? Mix kit female astonished gasp. But let's just do working on it. Good. If it wasn't in C, where was it then? I don't think I have anything else but C on this computer. No. It's just stupid windows. I'm not getting it. M I X K I T. Minus human so it's not Oh there we found it. Open guess what open with Can you tell me where it is, Windows? Oh man, Windows really sucks. Windows really sucks bad. It used to be better, honestly. But it's getting bulkier and user unfriendly by the minute. Just want to know where it is. Open file location. It's in downloads. There we go. Good. Now we're going to open it with Audacity. I'm just going to drag it in. Good, because it's way too loud. Let's normalize real quick. Bum, 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 beep, bum, effect. And why is this so low quality, the audacity? It's not used to being on a 4K screen. Dum, dum, dum. Is it special? Volume. It's under volume. Select the audio. All right. Select the audio. Effect, volume, normalize. Good, minus 10. Minus 10 decibel. Let's do minus 20, apply. Yeah, that's way better. And we cannot save is the problem, we have to export. Export. And hopefully it's gonna be ask me to override. Over Overwrite. Is it or did it? Oops. Uh, and this one as well. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Yes. This one as well is way too loud. Mm, bubbling too. Default beep camera one. Good. Camera one. Audacity. So, guaranteed it did not export here. Also, why are you so big? Let's try again. Export audio. Find it. See uses music. It went into music. Good. Let's go into Dungeon of the Endless. <laughs> um, downloads. There you go. Save. Export. Already exists. Replace. Yes, please. That's what she said. Says the fat cat. Good. Um, we're done with this. Can we close it? Audacity. Audacity. The program Audacity has the audacity to have the closing X symbol on the top left corner instead of the top, top right. This is audacious. Good. I'll select all. Effect. Repeat the normalize. Export. Export. Replace. Good. Don't save the project. We're done over here. Because I have Windows errors and Windows thingies. All the time they're way too loud. Good. And I don't want to use the default Windows sounds. Because uh, they suck. <laughs> they suck big time. Now here. Back to that. So unenable this works. But I'm going to look it up on my other computer. What was my solution there? Because the solution is awkward. Honestly. If you can just uncheck something. Maybe I missed it here. Lighting, shadows, post-processing, rendering, 
Nope. Is all good. Wonder if we can get rid of this here. But the project because it says a script of render pipeline is in use. Some settings will not be used and are hidden. Huh? Good whatever. Bum 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 bum. Input manager, memory settings, package manager. Good. Yeah, and that is the problem if you're using the URP. Why am I using this even? Did Catlike tell me to use this? Let's find out. I don't think so. I'm using this of my own accord. That's... That's brave. Anyway, um, assign this. Let's keep going. This is 26 minutes already. Are we going to get anything done? When we enter play mode now, a reference or image will appear. Good. And the inspector of the even though nothing gets drawn, we can access the inspector of a mesh via double clicking on this reference or via the properties of the context menu we can open for it. Good. So this is the current state of our mesh. It doesn't have any vertices, no indices. It has one sub mesh with zero triangles and its bounds are set to zero. So there is nothing to draw. Good. Adding vertices. Mesh contains triangles, which is a simple source that can be described in 3D. Triangle has three corners. These are the vertices of the mesh, which will be defined first. As the most simplest vertices, is nothing more than a position in 3D space. Describe with the vector 3 value. We create vertices for a single triangle using the default 0, right, and up vectors. Using the default 0, right, and up vectors. Mm -hmm. This defines an isosceles right triangle right, that lies on the xy plane. This 90, uh, 90 degree corner at the origin, and the other corner is a single unit away in a different dimension each. Um, there are multiple ways in which we could set the vertices via a simple mesh RP, but the simplest is to create a vector 3 array with the desired vertices and assign to the vertices property of our mesh. Good, let's do this then. Easy. Good, new procedure right, good conversion by mesh. He squishes it in here. So that's what we're gonna do. Mesh vertices equal a new vector three array. Good. And it's gonna come in many things in here, not just one line. That's why we got the curly brackets. Brackets. Vector three zero. Oh, this is just beautiful code. Vector three. Other people do this. Uh, equals a new vector three zero one uh, zero. And uh, uh, no, no, no. That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna do vector right because Unity has this functionality. Why not use it? Good. We're learning here up good um, but this is already a, a new thingy there this is not a method or anything I like to have this in one line I really do good hmm that's all right wonderful and then what do we have to fill the mesh before assigning it to the mesh filter Good question. Do we? This isn't mandatory, but it makes the most sense. Also, adjusting meshes that are already used triggers notification whether meshes change later. So mesh render components can adjust the changes. So you typically finish generating the mesh before assigning it to anything. Good. Vertices 3. 3 vertices. So uh, they are telling me... Oh, component errors. Whoops. And as always... We forgot the semicolon there. Good. Typical. This is just typical. Anyway, play. And now they are telling me I can click here something. And then I get some... Get some... Get some, get some. Um, I think I tried this before. 
Ah, we went to play with another reference of a procedural mesh, mesh filter. Yep. Good. Uh, even if we can access the inspector of our mesh, we are double clicking on its reference. All via the properties. Double clicking on the access the inspector of our mesh. So the mesh we can double click. Oh, this is magical. So we have one, one sub mesh here, but zero triangles. Why? Why? We got three vertices, but we got zero triangles because it's not filled yet. I think we just, all we did was um, put vertices in to the mesh. That's all we did. The whispers grow louder. <laughs> the whispers. We approach oblivion. <laughs> we approach oblivion. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe this is all like it's supposed to be. Good. Um, so we did that now. Right, and to now an inspector shows that it's three vertices. Each vertex defi each vertex defines a position which consists of three thirty-two bit float values. That's three times four bytes, thus twelve bytes per vertex. For a total of thirty-six bytes, isn't that beautiful? There are no triangles yet, but the mesh has already automatically derived its bounds from the vertices that we gave it. Oh, that's smart. Thank you, Unity. Pretty good engine, right? Defining the triangle. Vertices alone are not enough. We also have to describe how the triangles of the mesh are to be drawn, even for a trivial mesh that only has a single triangle. We do this by assigning an interray with triangle indices to the triangle's property. To the triangle's property? Mesh vertices? So we have a mesh triangle's property? We do. Huh. Who would have known? Good. Well, somebody who knows. <laughs> right. Mesh triangle. But... Uh, why put it down here? Oh, because it belongs down here. Good. I'm going to control D here. I just like the uh, notepad plus plus. It's super fast. It is the, the fastest you can do. Uh, screw visual plus by uh, visual studio. Visual plus. What is that? Um, visual studio really sucks, by the way. Just in case you're wondering. Um, you're using this because you're stupid. Right, it's simple. There is no other explanation. So sorry to say. I mean, I'm stupid as well, probably. Very probably. But, um, and not because I'm using Visual Studio. That's you. That's not me. Mesh triangles. New int array. Good. Let's make it fappen. And it's gonna be. Jow <laughs> uh, answers his own rhetorical questions. Well, what am I supposed to do? There's a question. I need answers. Um, the fat cat doesn't know. <laughs> if there is a question you know the answer of, I'm definitely going to ask you, fat cat. 100%. That is a promise. Let's be even quicker here. Good. And that is the triangles defined. We have a new interray. Uh with wait what? Zero, one and two, wait what? How do I add in another oh. I don't understand. Alright, sure, so this is an array and there is <laughs> There's just three ints in it. Triangles. Mesh triangles? I'm lost and I'm okay with that, says the fat cat. Well, it's, it's really simple. You have a mesh, right? <laughs> a mesh is just a representation of something. Like uh, when you go fishing, you have a net, right? And that net has knots. And that's your mesh. It's, it's composed of many knots and they're to, strung together by a string and that's your mesh. And, and the knots are the vertices and the triangles are the lines you draw between. This is just too much for me. Oh, all right, Fat Cat, all right. No problem. Anyway, so we got the new int here. Wonderful. What I don't understand as a, as a newbie programmer 
as a complete noob. Uh, triangles as a property. As a mesh property, if I'm not mistaken. And how is a triangle, how are all the triangles just an array of ints? How is the, the thing you know? <laughs> Where to draw the triangles then? Do I... Uh... Well, I guess Catlike is going to explain this to us. Good. Let's so list three indices in order. Boop, 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 boop. That's what we're going to do. Good. And we have an update in our engine. Good. Uh, let's. Uh, did we save it? Control S. Now we have an update. Boom, boom. Good. And then we play. And then we double derp our mesh. Our fish is in it. And it tells me we have one triangle. Three indices starting from zero. There we go. We have zero, one, and there's the bound size. It's a position. How do I go back? Like Joe Black? Like so. Good. <coughs> Sorry. So we do have a mesh. Three vertices. Where are they? Are you kidding me? Unity already drew it. Man, this is this is what I love about the cat-like coding. You immediately have results. This is just beautiful. Wonder if we can add in some dynamic code, but that is uh, that is not for now. I don't think. Uh, let's keep going. Why well, the going is good. Now a mesh tells us. <laughs> that it has a single triangle defined by three vertex indices. The indices always start from index zero in the triangle array. In the triangle array here. Right? Always start from zero. Even when we didn't put it at a zero in. Huh? Because there is only a single submesh. The indices take up only six bytes in total of 12 because they are stored as. Uh, U int 16, which matches 16 bit U short C sharp type, which defines an unsigned integer with only two bytes instead of four. That is great. So that's why I like this one variable here. Byte. And uh, that can be. Uh, oh, wait, we have to name it. Um, we call, we're calling it a short number. Or we could call it very small number right that's what you could do and you can also um why is this variable <laughs> that is so good it's not a public variable and it's not a private it's just a variable and this here is just a byte so we have a very small number now how original <laughs> And it doesn't work. Why? Type nice byte could not be found. Wait, what? The type of namespace, by, uh, namespace byte could not be found? Um, that's crazy because I need this. I definitely need this. Is it straight up in the system? Just guessing here. This is what you shouldn't do. You should look it up instead. Um, but my guess was correct. I am a genius. <laughs> ah, what a good stream this is. This feels just good. In fact, it says I always take big bites. <laughs> good. It is declared but never used. Oh. Oh. That's all right. Good. By default, triangles are only visible when looking at their front face. And that's uh, drawing it clockwise, right? Uh, not their back face. Which side you're looking at is determined by the winding order of the vertices. If you trace the edges of a triangle going through its vertices in the order indicated by the indices, you end up going either clockwise or counterclockwise visually. The clockwise side is the front face, so that is the visible side. This means that we'll only see a triangle when looking in the negative z direction. We can turn this around by swapping the order of the second and third vertex, uh, vertex indices. Then we can see a triangle when looking in the positive z direction. So we could do something like this, two and one, and then of course we go 
around the clock counterclockwise instead of clockwise. I think uh, some people say anti-clockwise. Must be must be British. Not sure. Good. Meshang is uh, equals new int. Bup, bup, bup. Right. And then couldn't we swap the vertex positions instead of the indices? Yes, that's also possible. Normal vectors. Currently, the lighting of a triangle is incorrect. The lighting of a triangle is incorrect. It behaves as it gets lit from the opposite side. This happens because we haven't defined the normal vectors yet, which are used by shaders to calculate lighting. A normal vector is a unit length vector that describes the local up direction if you were standing on a surface. So these vectors point straight away from the surface. And you can abuse this because that's always going to be a 90 degree. And uh, then you can do some fancy math with. Um, so, uh, thus, the normal vector of 4 or triangle surface should be vector 3 back. Pointing straight down the negative z-axis in local space of a mesh. But if no normal vectors are provided, you will use a forward vector by default. Hence, our triangle appears to be lit from the wrong side. Although it only really makes sense to define a normal vector for a surface, a mesh defines normal vectors per vertex. Shaders be shaded. Um, the final surface normal used for shading is found by interpolating the vertex normal across the surface of the triangle. By using different normal vectors, the illusion of surface curvature can be added to flat triangles. Oh yeah? This makes it possible to give meshes the appearance of being smooth, while in reality they are faceted. We can add normal vectors to vertices by assigning a vector 3 array to the normals property of a mesh after setting the vertex positions. Unity checks whether the arrays are the same length and will fail and complain if we supply the wrong amount of normal vectors. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. Good, so we will have normals here. And currently our lighting is the wrong way about. Interesting. Normals is a new vector 3 array. Um, good. And we're doing this manually. Surely we're gonna do something like mesh recalculate vectors in the future. Is this is this method spelled recalculate normals? Something like that in the future. Um, good, but we're gonna have vector bags now. Is this going to be visible much with correct lighting? Ah. Ah, with correct lighting. Let's look at it with incorrect lighting for a brief moment. Um, we have to look f from it now the other side. From the other side. Oh, the, the default camera looks at it from the correct side. Good. Hmm. And this is now incorrect lighting, apparently, because it's so gray. Now, but if we correct it and put in vector three bags, a bunch of them, vector three bag, like three of them, then we should have correct lighting. Right? Yeah, we do. It's white now. Good. Interesting, interesting. As a consequence of adding normal vectors, the size of a vertex is double to 24 bytes per vertex and 72 bytes in total. <laughs> Good. Positions and normals. Now, we can also check this out here in our mesh data. Good. Can we though? 12 bytes and 12 bytes. And here it says 12 bytes and 12 bytes. That is very nice. Texturing. Surface details can be added to the mesh by applying a texture to it. A simplest texture is an image that is used to colorize the surface. Colorize the surface. Mm -hmm. In the case of URP, oh, we did install URP for this. This is known as a base map. 
Here is such a texture, which makes it easy to see how the textures apply to the triangle. That's nice. Safe image as base map ping. Good. This PCC Unity projects. Oops. A, who made all these projects there? Cat-like and assets. Materials, scenes, scripts. Why is this materials folder not capitalized? Um, materials. Should we should we put it in there, or should we do a new one for textures? Textures. Good. Base map ping. Save it. Good. Here's such a texture, which makes it easy to see how the texture is applied to the triangle. Also, let's uh, get out of the mode. Go to my S assets. Have the base map here. This is a sprite 2D and UI. Is it? I don't know. Cadillac did not tell me. So let's keep reading. Good. Download the image. Then import it to the project. You don't the project. Ask the folder of your drag and drop it to find the project window. Then assign it to the base map property of the material. All right. I will. Materials. Default. Is this the default material? I'm talking about. Could be. So we're supposed to put it in here. Wait. But where? Dun, dun. Where exactly? Base map, they, they said. Let's put it in the base map. Huh. That's how it looks. Cool. Isn't it super duper cool? And we have this um, um, properties window here because we right clicked and said properties and then we get a window. It's great. It's like, it's like in Microsoft Windows. Good. Now, this is nice. That is nice. Initially, this appears to make no difference because we haven't defined any texture coordinates yet. They're zero by default, which means that the bottom left corner of the texture is used for the entire triangle, which is white. Uh -huh. As the texture is a 2D image and the triangle surface is also 2D, the texture coordinates are vector two values. They specify where to sample the texture at each vertex and they will be interpo interpolated across the triangle surface. They're normalized coordinates. So 0, 1 inclusive range covers the entire texture per dimension. Normalized coordinates, that just means uh, between 0 and 1, like it says here. Um, so you got to think percentages. Like 90% would, would be 0 0.9. If you want to cover it 90% of the time, you do a 0 0.9. In Unity, the origin is at the bottom left corner of the textures. So most obvious texture mapping without distortion matches the vertex positions. We add them to the mesh by assigning an array to its UV property. Texture coordinates are often described as UV coordinates because they're two-dimensional coordinates in texture space named U and V instead of X and Y. <gasps> I never knew this. This is crazy pants. Did you know this, fat cat? <laughs> fat cat did not know. Good. Um, mesh UV. Good. Let's give you a UV property. Um, the mesh. The Unity mesh. It does have a UV property. We don't have to give it to it. But we can assign a value to the property. New. Vector 2 this time. And it's going to be an array. And it's going to fit right in here. Good. Vector 0, vector right, and vector up. Hey, we have written this down before. Let's copy and paste. Because we're super duper lazy. Wonderful, we assigned some UV now. Wait, did that already work? Faka says, Psst, I knew that. I thought everyone knew that. <laughs> Good. There's inconsistent casing. Renaming meta file succeeded. Wait, what? clear play and we have this now good all right 
textured triangle. Can I imagine have multiple texture coordinate sets per vertex? Multiple texture coordinate sets per vertex. I say yes. Unity supports up to eight sets. Ah, uh, Unity supports up to eight sets. Um, what does this mean? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We cannot have eight pixels. Because... Oh, wait a minute. Half and half? Uh, but since it's cut... Hmm... Accessible via separate properties also possible to define 1D, 3D, or 4D coordinates, but via methods only, not via properties. Alright, alright. Let's not overcomplicate things. Fakka says it's called cat-like because it would take me nine lives to figure out what's going on. <laughs> nah, this is not too complicated. It's just a little bit of code here. The mesh inspector will list the texture coordinates as UV0 and shows that they add eight bytes to the vertex size. Good. I'm going to take your word for it, cat-like. Or should we... Uh, should we double-click here? Read, write, enabled. Good. UV0. There you go. Okay, so we didn't we didn't believe them. You could also map the texture in a different way, for example, by using vector 2, 1 for the third vertex. This will distort the image, shearing it. Good. What about vertex colors? You can also define colors per vertex. Colors per vertex? By assigning color array to the color property of a mesh. Really? Really? Or a color32 array to its colors32 property. These colors will be interpolated just like its texture corners. Um, what do you mean? The default UP shaders don't support vertex colors though. But you could create a shader graph that uses the vertex colors. It won't include vertex colors. Hmm. Good. Let's forget about that fact. Normal mapping. Uh, another common way to add surface details is via normal mapping. This is usually done with a normal map texture, which is an image containing surface normal vectors. Here's such a texture, which describes a strong checkerboard pattern of alternating rays and low bevels, plus some subtle unevenness for variation. After importing the image, set uh, it Good. Save image as normal map. Beautiful. Good. After importing the image, set its texture type to normal map. Otherwise, it won't be properly interpreted. And we want to interpret it properly. Good. So, since I'm using this default material all the time, I'm going to put its properties somewhere where I'm actually using it. Like here. Like there. Good. Hey, this is big. Metallic map, assets, <laughs> textures, normal map, texture type, normal map, assign, joint, play. Oh, we need to save it, of course. And there, it looks 3D. It already looks 3D. Man, the cat like guy. He knows how to teach this guy. What a genius. I love him so much, but let's continue on. Although this already appears to work, the result is correct, currently incorrect. Wait, what? What appears higher should appear lower instead and vice versa. What? I did not even notice. This happens because the vectors from the normal map exist in texture space and have to be converted to world space to affect lighting. This requires a transformation matrix, which defines the 3D space relative to the surface, known as tangent space. He got you. <laughs> it consists of a right and up and a forward axis. The up axis should point towards, uh, point away from the surface, surface, for which the vertex normal vectors are used. Besides uh, that, we also need a right and forward axis. The right axis should point in whatever direction we consider right, in our case simply vector 3 right. It is also known as a tangent axis or vector, because tangent vector, because it must always be tangent to the surface curvature. We define these per vertex by assigning vectors to the tangents property of the mesh. The shader can construct the third axis itself by calculating the vector orthogonal to the normal and tangent. However, it 
could do this in two different ways, producing a vector pointing either forward or backward. That's why the tangent vectors have to be vector four values. The fourth component should be either one or minus one to control the direction of the third axis. Good, don't worry if you don't have this in your head, what they just said is all fine. The default tangent vectors point is right and have their fourth component set at one. Due to how unity shades construct tangent space, this is incorrect. We have to use minus one instead. No problem. Good, we're gonna put in some tangents then, in other words. And no problemo. Um, mesh tangents. Good. For the unity to know what's up. And that is going to be new vector. What am I doing? For array. Good. And we're going to fill it up with new vector force. And they're going to be 1f, 0f, 0f, and minus 1f. Good. Easy peasy. And we need three of them. So we're going to double control D it and get rid of the comma that is too much there. Dun, dun, dun. I think I want this a little bit more readable. Good. That's better. That is excellent. <laughs> is it? Yeah, sure. Good. Did we miss anything? No. That's all right. Correct and incorrect normal mapping. So the lighty is here and the darky is there. Good. Let's see how it looks correctly. Compiler error. Oh dear. Procedure the mesh does not contain a different tangent. Does not. Tangents then? Dum dum da da dum dum bomb beam. Good. Looking great. This looks quite nice now. Beautiful. I like anything else. <laughs> Why is the direction of the third axis configurable? This facilitates easy mirroring of normal maps, which is often used in 3D models of things with bilateral symmetry, like people. Huh, good. As tangent vectors have four components, our vertex size has grown by 16 bytes to a final size of 48 bytes. That's a total of 144 bytes for three vertices. Wow, this is too much. Uh, our program will not run on a pocket calculator. Constructing a quad. Actually, this probably would run on a pocket calculator. But nothing much else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> meshes can contain more than a single triangle. Yeah, meshes can contain more than a single triangle. To demonstrate this, we turn our mesh into a quad by adding a second triangle to it. Exciting stuff. Let's do this. We can create a, uh, a squad. <laughs> Playing too much the... Uh, the Warhammer 40k. We can create a squad by taking two space marines and three sisters of battle and then we're gonna have some fun. But uh, by taking two right isoskeles triangles I, I, I never knew this word. Isoskeles triangles and putting them together with a hypotenuses touching. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep our existing triangle and add a second one with its right corner at one unit from the origin in both the x and y dimensions. It's completely clear, isn't it? I mean, it's not when they tell it, but you can imagine putting another triangle uh, against it, uh, against the triangle that we already have, and then you have a chord. Easy peasy. Um, we use the vertex order right up one, but to make it clear that we have two distinct triangles, we'll initially slightly offset and scale up the new triangle by increasing its coordinates from one to 1.1. Add the required positions to the vertices array. Good, we will. Uh, where's my vertices array? Here. Good, we're gonna have this in a new line. Dum, bum, 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 bum. To make this extremely readable. Hmm. 
Hmm. They have it very similar here. They might even have it more readable than I do. <laughs> no, that can't be. New Vector 3. Good. New Vector 3. 1.1 1. 1 F. There's something missing? Nap time. See you in 30, says a fat cat. All right, fat cat, you have a good one. I'm gonna see you a bit later. Cat-like nap. Sounds good. But why is this only two? Mm -hmm. New vector three with only two positions. Can this can this method be overloaded per default? Is this is this a feature? This is so confusing. Would it not complain? Well, let's write it up and see if it works or not. Good. Dup, dup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1.1 and 1.1. Good. 1.1. Also increase the normals and tangents arrays so they have the same size, simply filling them with the same values. Good. That can be done. <laughs> that can be done easily. Whoops. Completely wrong button. again um good all right so this is the normals and here we have that da -da -da. Oops. Good. Da -da -da. So that will simply work. Because new vector 3 and only two values. Huh. Let's see if it complains or not. Syntax error comma expected in the 16. And the sixteenth chapel. Good. Oops. Good. You have vector three with only oh, this is crazy. Also I'm gonna comment out my uh, my bite. Cause it's very small, might as well not be there. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, mesh UV is out of bounds. Needs to be the same size. Good. Undistorted matching, we have to use the presentation coordinates. Got the UV. To keep our texture undistorted and matching, we have to use appropriate texture coordinates for the new vertices. Sure. Um, yep. This is. Where it's gonna go, mesh UV. Right. Also, let's keep this a little bit more readable. By doing something like this. Good, then we go down here. Copy this. Add a comma this time. Paste it in. And we want a right one here. And we want an up one there. Good. And we want a one one there. Mm -hmm. Finally, add its indices to the triangles array. Due to the way we define the new vertices, we can list them in sequence. 
Really? Three, four, five. Good triangles. Good. Three, four, five. Now, right? Make it even more readable. Good. Now I shouldn't have any reason to complain. And it does not. Huh. Huh. Good. Of course, this is expected. I'm just copying the code there. Finally, it is in the way we did that. Reusing vertices. We don't need to define separate vertices per triangle. It is possible for multiple triangles to use the same vertex. We can't do this while the triangles are separate. But to finish the chord, we push them together, which means that we can reuse the right and up vertices of the first triangle for the second one. Thus, we can reduce our vertex array to four positions. Zero, so right up, and one on the XY plane. Likewise, eliminate the redundant data from the other arrays. The index list for the second triangle now becomes one, two, three. Mm hmm. Good. Reduce our vertex array to four positions. Right. Good. We're just going to follow along. Um, this is just a double use. This makes sense. We have four vertices, uh, vertices for a quad. But we have two triangles and they share vertices. Makes complete sense. But um, then in your head, draw the lines is a bit rough. But that's what we got the computer for. Good, we're going to use this new vector here. Good. For over there. And get rid of all this. Good. So maybe we'll end up with a single line in the end again. Good. Likewise, eliminate the redundant data from the other arrays. The back, 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 back. Dun, 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 dun. Nothing easier than that. Good, what about the 1F0F stuff? Yes, same thing. Also, we don't need the tab anymore. But maybe make it readable like so. The uh, the high indenture here, we don't need anymore. This, this looks all right. Oh, too much. Too much is too much. Dun, bum, 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 bum. Good. Vector one, that's right. Zero, right, up, and one. Good. And this stuff? Mm. One, two, three, mesh tangents. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. I can't see. Oh no, I can see even less. Um, is this four? I hate this dry code. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's a new missing here. Did I delete this? Good. Surely that's all right. Just doesn't fit into the line, which is extremely disconcerting. But this is the tangents. Maybe there's a way to make them easier. Honestly, I don't like this. Good. We're going to do something ourselves now. Um, 
we are going to temporarily have a vector for variable here and we're going to call it um, default 10 that's what we're going to do and that is going to be a new vector 4 and that equals you guessed it this jazz good <sighs> right and then we are going to put it in here def10 oops Dump, dump, dump. Good. Right. So I don't have to look at this. Let's see if we get an error. New expression requires an argument list. 15. Requires an argument list. Oh, well, what did I do here? Good. Completely, completely typical. Now, so what are we doing? Uh, field setting triangles. Good. The index list of the second triangle now becomes one, two, three. Good. Index list of the second triangle mesh triangles. Yep, becomes just one, two, three. We can do that. Boom, 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 boom. Two one one two three. Good because we're reusing the same triangles. We only have four vertices. We're not reusing the same triangles. We're reusing the same vertices. Um, we have only four, so it makes sense. We have zero, one, two, and three, and in different orders there. Good, but let's take a moment to imagine this. Now this list has how many entries? One, two, three, four, five, six entries. Oh yeah, because it has to have six entries. Because this draws the triangles. And it's just gonna... If this triangles is not divisible by three, this triangles array, I should say, full of integers, if it's not divisible by the three, then Unity will throw an error. That's what they said before, I think. Wonderful. Let's see how it looks. Good. Completing domain every time. I thought I had circumvented that. But no. So this is how it looks now. And if we look at the game object, double click the procedural mesh, we see that we have this amount of bytes. I don't know why he keeps track of that. But... Let's see if he does it again. <laughs> he does it again. We can verify via the inspector that the mesh has four vertices and two triangles. Good, four vertices, two triangles. Actually, he looked at that data now. Good, two triangles. And what does it tell me, the, the vertices? Indices, six. One submesh, two triangles. Six indices. That the mesh has four vertices. Where? It doesn't tell me here. <laughs> Position, normal, tangent, UV zero, indices six, one submesh, six indices, four vertices, two triangles. Well, I guess you have to do the math yourself. But this is two triangles with six indices. Good. Wonderful. Advanced Mesh RP. Unity 2019 introduced an alternative advanced mesh RP, which allows more efficient generation of meshes, making possible to skip intermediate steps and automatic verifications. Unity 2020 expanded on this RP to make it work well with jobs and burst. We use this last approach, even though we won't use separate jobs in this tree yet. Good. That's putting things on different uh, threads. Um, following something else currently. 
where they're doing this, but... All right, multi-stream approach. When we assign data to a mesh via the simple app Unity, it has to copy and convert everything to the mesh's native memory at some point. The advanced API allows us to work directly in the native memory format of the mesh, skipping conversion. This means that we must be aware of how the data of the mesh is laid out. The memory of the mesh is split into regions. The two regions we need to know about are the vertex region and the index region. The vertex region consists of one or more data streams, which are sequential blocks of vertex data of the same format. Unity supports up to four different vertex data streams per mesh. As we have vertex positions, normals, tangents, and texture coordinates, we could store each in a separate stream. Let's call this a multi-stream approach. Multi-stream approach, first positions, then normals, then tangents, and then texture coordinates. All right, so uh, create a new advanced multi-stream procedural mesh component type like that. Like before with simple procedure mesh, initially only creates an empty mesh and assign it to the mesh filter. Um, good. Whatever you say, cat like. Advanced multi stream procedural mesh. Good. An advanced multi stream. Procedural mesh. Good. All right. Good. This requires this. Here is my class. And on enable, we're going to do this all. Good. New mesh, procedural mesh is also named procedural mesh. Why can we not name it advanced procedural mesh? All right. Do we have to sign this now? I don't think so. Then replace the simple component of a game object with a new advanced one. Or alternatively, adjust the duplicate and disable the simple version so you can compare them later. Adjust and duplicate. Adjust a duplicate. Triangle. Make sure to spell it wrong. Duplicate. Advanced mesh. Simple. Advanced mesh. Also, we're going to disable this. And advanced multi stream procedural. Where does this go? Mesh non element non. Here does it go into the mesh script? I think. No, it doesn't want to. Mm. Mesh non. Non non mesh filter. Oh it ejected it somehow. Uh. Oh no, I know what I'm I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Good advanced mesh, some procedure mesh remove. Advanced put it in. Good. Let's play and we should have nothing and we do have nothing. Good. Oh wait a minute, can we can we turn this on? Oh we have again don't destroy a load? Oh because we are haha. <laughs> we can enable this now. Disable it. Good. Yeah, this is just so annoying. I wish I could just have a check mark dechecked. For that. Good. Oops, we have other things in our thingy here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, on enable. And why is this so wonky here? Do not know, but let's rectify. Good. Copy, save, advanced. 
wir denn? Good. Now, what do you want from me, cat like? Good. To write into native mesh data, we have to first allocate it. Oh dear. Oh dear. We do this by invoking a static mesh allocate writable mesh data method. To facilitate generating meshes and batches, this method returns a mesh mesh data array struct that acts like an array of native mesh data available for writing. We have to tell it how many meshes we want to generate, which is just one. Do this before creating the mesh object and keep track of the array via a variable. Uh-huh. We do this before having an object. Good, let's do it before we uh, create the mesh object here. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. Focus uh, and keep track of it via a variable. The mesh data array. Good. Leaving the data empty for now, we finish by invoking mesh apply and dispose right on mesh data with the array and mesh it applies to its arguments. We can directly apply the array to the mesh because it only has a single element. Afterwards, we can no longer access the mesh data unless we retrieve it again via mesh acquire read only mesh data. All right. Whatever you say. This is now a bit different. So instead of putting this now in the mesh, we put it in here is what he's saying. For interplay and now the mesh inspector will show that it is completely empty. All right, I believe you. To fill the mesh data, we have to retrieve the single element from the array. Keeping track of it, we have variable. You type is mesh data. Ah. Good. Mesh data array, mesh data array. Aha, uh -huh. so we make a mesh data variable. And with that, we can uh, we can put it in the triangles. I think vertex attributes. We need collections and rendering. All right, all right. Good unity collections for lists and such. Good. Make a dot there. Otherwise, it won't work. And then a Unity Engine rendering. Good. From the mesh that is still undefined, we have to define it as a business. We need to use the types of collection of rendering namespace. Each vertex of a mesh has four attributes a position, a normal tangent, and a set of texture columns. We scrap these by allocating a temporary native array with vertex attribute descriptor elements. I store the count values in variables to make it clear what the numbers represent. Oh dear. This gets a bit rough. But let's follow along. Um, this is disconcerting that we have to do this here all the time, but all right. A vertex attribute count is four. Good. Huh? Count values in variables to make it clear what the numbers represent. All right. Then we have variables. Good. Vertex attributes. Native array. Oh dear. We have a native array Oof. with a vertex attribute descriptor type oh man how 
do I make this readable at all? Because I cannot read this. Hmm. So there's a vertex attributes. Vertex attribute descriptor. Well, let's just do it then. That's fine. A vertex streams of the mesh are then allocated by invoking set vertex buffer params on the mesh data. But the vertex count and the attribute definitions are arguments. After that, we no longer need the attribute definition, so we dispose of it. Uh, int vertex count. What? Count. Allocate. Allocate a temp. Hmm. Good. Mesh data, set vertex buffer params, vertex attributes, dispose. What the heck is this? Do we need to use a native array for the attributes? No, but the alternatives use a regular array, which requires managed memory allocation. Invoking set vertex buffer params with a variable number of arguments, like all other methods with an explicit variable parameter list, allocates a managed array as well to store the arguments. Before setting the vertex buffer parameters, we have to describe the four attributes. But vertex attributes in new, boop, boop, boop. Good, vertex attribute count. Allocator temp. Where is this coming from? What does it do? Yeah, does, I understand nothing here. This is just, cat like just completely lost me. I have no idea. We're gonna follow along, but this is a bit terrible. Good, vertex attributes zero, dimensions three. Good. Mesh data set vertex buffer. Where did we put this one in? We forgot about this here? No. Set vertex vertex attributes is both. Vertex attributes are zero. Here. Good. Mm hmm This is just terrible. Mesh data set vertex per then they're gonna dispose of it. How do named arguments work? You can indicate which argument a value is for by writing the method's parameter name in front of it. Followed by a colon. This allows you to provide the arguments in a different order than a parameter is defined. You can also start the argument list with unnamed arguments, which must match the parameter order, and switch to named arguments at some point. You can switch back to unnamed arguments after that. We follow this by setting a named argument. So do we have a named argument here? Somewhere? Pfft, I have no clue. We follow this by setting the attributes for normal singles and texture coordinates. First arguments we should read should be vertex attribute normal. Vertex attribute tangent and vertex attribute to text coordinate. Also set their dimensionality appropriately and give them successive stream successive stream indices. Huh, kind of boom up. <laughs> this is just This is just I'm gonna do what they tell me to do. But I don't pretend to understand any of this. This is a bit rough. Good. I have no clue what this is. Vertex attributes 1. Alright, so the vertex attributes is an array. And isn't this native array? Could be very vertex attributes. New native array. It is. So, why don't you say this? And I still don't know how to write it up. 
without getting confused about it. Maybe just like that. Hmm. Hmm. Vertex attribute zero is a new vertex descriptor. Alright. Vertex attribute descriptor. There's there's so many types I have never heard about before. I don't understand this. New vertex attribute descriptor, new vertex attribute descriptor. Vertex attribute tangent, dimension. Ah this is a named one, isn't it? This is a named parameter. Possibly a named attribute argument. Good. Oh, we can <laughs> we can test this code. What is the error? Using generic type native array. Uh huh. A native array. Seventeen. <laughs> this only works if you name it a variable. I I bet you. This is just crazy pants. Does I have no idea. This is so advanced, from zero to super duper advanced. In the beginning, it was fun, but now I don't understand anything. <laughs> Terrible. Good. Let's run it. And it doesn't do anything. Genius. Fantastic. But of course, we can click it, and then it's going to tell us some things. Stream one, stream two, stream three. This must be stream zero then. I don't know. Because does it not tell me? Stream 1, stream 2, stream 3. Missions will now show the same vertex data layout and size as for a simple mesh example. Oh, look. Cat like nap is done. Fat cat. Are you back? Back for business? The mesh inspector will now show the same vertex data. Did I, did I wake you up with my... Oh, I hope I didn't wake you up. Being too loud. Back for nine more hours. Ah. All right. The mesh inspector will now show the same vertex data layout and size as for a simple mesh example. It doesn't reveal how this data is split into streams. It does not reveal. But it does reveal it for me because I have a new Unity version. That's interesting. That's, uh, that's nice. We can optimize our usage. Yeah, we will optimize our usage for sure. Good. Oh, you didn't wake me up at all? That would be impossible. <laughs> Good. We can optimize the user's native array a bit more by skipping its memory initialization step. By default, Unity fills the allocated memory blocks with zeros to guard against weird values. We can skip the step by passing native array options, uninitialized memory, as a third argument to the native array constructor. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is different, but let's trust the cat like here. On that, um, here is it, and there is no room. I cannot see what the heck is going on. Let's have a new line. Good. And maybe to make it more readable, indented up to the uh, equal sign or something, or not. In fact, it says, I was dreaming very interesting dreams. That's, uh, that's crazy, Fat Cat. What were you dreaming about? This means that the contents of the area are arbitrary and can be invalid, but we overwrite it all so that it doesn't matter. Setting vertices, although we won't use a job in this tutorial, at this point we'll switch to using mathematics. Using Unity Mathematics. Using static Unity Mathematics math. Alright, let's do that then. Good. Using Unity Mathematics. And then we're gonna using static Unity Mathematic Math. 
Let's use very static math here. Good. After invoking set vertex buffer params, we can retrieve native arrays for the vertex streams by invoking get vertex data. Fact is that I was at a school or something, and there were a bunch of people that had broken their legs or something. All right. The native data generates a different point of different section of mesh data. So it's actually proxy. There's no separate array. So we're going to jump right with the mesh data. I have no idea. Get vertex generates a different float three. Use the distribution system float instead of vector three. Alright. Mesh data, set vertex, buffer. Alright, before we actually make our mesh, we're gonna do a lot of stuff beforehand. Native array float 3. Positions. Mesh data. Get vertex data. Float 3. Alright, up floats. Oh, this is just writing the simple one really quickly. But we do have to work beforehand a little bit to make it happen, I think. On the other hand, this looks super quick. Alright. Do the same for the rest of the vertex data, passing the appropriate stream index as an argument to get vertex data. Sure. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. We're gonna do exactly that. Good. Um, native array. Boop, 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 boop. Bless you, says Fatcat. Thank you very much. Setting triangles. Uh huh. This seems simple enough. Just add a line to here where we set the other mothers here, the uh, vertex attributes. And then we have a mesh data on top of the very new mesh. Uh huh, uh huh. Set index buffer params, triangle index count, index format, set index buffer params. <laughs> Feels like we're hacking the engine. But that's what the cat like is doing all the time. And it is the reasonable thing to do. I'm 100% convinced. Um, all right. Good, there's some Linux Windows functionality that messed up here. Type of namespace, what? A name namespace matter does not exist in namespace unity. Does not? Um, did it go somewhere? <laughs> Did it go somewhere? Hold on. The name right does not exist. Oh yeah, we need the math. Uh, Unity Mathematic Math. Our mesh now has innocence, but it has as as simple mesh needs. That's because we're using a 32-bit unsigned integer values. Good. So what is the problem again? Type or namespace math does not exist. Um, mathematic math. I think I just copy pasted it here. Hmm. Mathematic. Oh, this is a spelling error, so I did not copy paste. Good. Good enough. All right. So now we have a new result. Our mesh now has indices, but they require twice as much space as our simple mesh needs. That's because we're using a 32-bit unsigned integer type. All right. Good enough. Um, also, to prove that this is really happening. Oh, what's now? Out of bounds, mesh only has four vertices. Whoops. That's not good. Don't tell me there's another spelling error here somewhere. Oh, we forgot about something. Hmm. So it said we did not have enough vertices. 
This is four and we need six. No, I have no idea. In the simple procedure mesh, I see everything clearly. There's the triangles, there's the vertices, there's the normals, there's the UE, and there's the tangents. Right? And with the advanced one, I have no idea what could be the the issue. Good, but we here we have normals and tangents, right? Well, this is the normals. That's two or three, so it's not so so much. And here we've got the tangents. Good. Text coordinates. So this must be the UV. Mm-hmm. And up here, and then logically this should be the vertices. It makes a ton of sense. Good, let's uh, save it, but uh, the error will, will show up again. Index buffer element zero is out of bounds. Mesh only has four vertices. Can your engine mesh data apply to mesh and dispose? Yeah, and that's the problem when you when you hack the engine. You cannot you cannot read the error message, or I can't. Mesh only has four vertices. Hmm. Did the cat like think about this? Because I just copied here. Hmm. This format allows a boop, boop, native array, usual training mesh data, get your initial short. Setting the sub mesh. Maybe I missed something. Hmm. Let's maybe read it. it says four. Four six. We do have four four six. Vertex count four. And Unity complains about this. So I doubt I did anything wrong. Must be the new editor version version or something. I just meant to follow this tutorial. Which was a version pro so <laughs> So where are we stuck? We're gonna go from where we're stuck upwards and double check if everything's correct. Hmm. Good, the last thing we did was put this in. Oh no! We didn't put this in, huh? Easy fix. Good, triangle indices. Set index puff buffer paramus trial a triangle. Oh. Good. Thank goodness. Wonderful. See what the unity has to say now. Here we go. That is the same information that we get here. Indice 6 unit uh, U integer 3 2 format. Float 3 2. No, that's not it. But here it is. 24B stands for bytes, maybe? Maybe. All right. Our mesh now is innocent, but it requires just as much space. Good, good, good. 24 bytes. Right. This format allows access to an enormous amount of vertices, but you need to use the smallest size of the format to have the size of an index buffer. This constrains the amount of accessible vertices to 6, 6, 60, 65,535. As we only have six vertices, we can suffice with index format. U integer 16, which matches U short type. Good. Mesh data. Right, we're gonna have this. Because we don't need as many. But maybe in the future we need more? I don't know. This is gonna be U integer, this is gonna be a U short instead. The native array. And yes, you short. 
And now we got only 12 bytes. Halving. What is going on? Advanced mesh? Good. Half of them. Here, 12 bytes. Good. Nice. Setting the submesh. The final step is to define the submeshes of the mesh. We do this after setting indices by setting the submesh count property to 1. Right. Before we actually make the mesh, um, we set the count to 1. Submesh count property to 1. Why though? Maybe we want more than one submesh. We also have to specify what part of the index buffer the submesh should use. <laughs> of course. This is done by invoking set submesh with a submesh index and a submesh descriptor value. The submesh descriptor constructor has two arguments for the index start and the index count. In our case, it should cover all indices. Mesh data, submesh count one. Mesh data set submesh zero, new submesh descriptor, triangle index count. Good. Now we finally see our quad again. Oh, what, already? That is, that is quick. And there it is. So this is the same as the other one. And which one gets drawn on top of the other? Oh, we got some Z fighting now. Good. This is good. Could also do something like this. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And we cannot see them from behind, of course. But that's cool. That's zero, one, two, three, ten, eleven, twelve, one, three. Oh, this is the coordinates. <laughs> nice. All right, all right, all right. Mesh and submesh bounds. When we create a mesh this way, Unity doesn't automatically calculate its bounds. All right, but let's look at the code. This one's very concise, and this one's very not concise. But surely this has some advantage. Also, where is all the data? This is UV. So this must be the triangles then. One, two, three. Triangles. Good. Where is this normals, tangents, UV, and triangles? Where is this triangles, normals, UV, and tangents? Uh, different sequence, but it's all right. Good. Advanced multi-stream procedural mesh. This looks advanced indeed. And I really don't like how this looks. Um, let's have some some cleanup here. Good. Just because. Um, bu -bu 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 here. I think it might look good enough. And this here is the brutal one. Vertex attributes, and you cannot say vertex attributes, vertex attributes, or native array vertex attributes. You cannot do this for some reason. Unity will throw an error. You have to use the var, which is crazy. This is very advanced because people use the var, the var here. This um, I don't know what it is. Type, the var type. So any variable. People use this out of uh, just just being lazy. They don't want to type float. They want to type for, um, vector three. So just type var. Grr, baby, says the fat cat. So um, instead of writing vertex three int three or something, they just write var. 
and Unity can figure out by itself what it is. And then the code becomes very unreadable. But uh, here, this var is needed. Var for something. Good. Here it's not needed. Here you could do mesh. But that will, will just duplicate. We'll, and, and we'll read mesh, mesh. And don't do that. It's very dry code. This looks better. So that's why we're doing that. Anyway, um, let's save it up. Good. And continue on. Reducing vertex size, because that's something we have to do. But hold on. Mesh and submesh bounds come first in this advanced thingy here. Good. And here's the same bounds, bounds. No, we're going to say variable bounds. Good when we create a mesh. This way, it doesn't only calculate its bounds. Sure. Mesh data is a mesh count. Let's have some bounds here. Good. And these are defined bounds. Interesting. Doesn't really have you read this good shake of what is recorded with the correct bounds ourselves by saying bounds for a submesh script that has a set submesh. We should also set its vertex count property. Sure. Good. Mesh data sets up mesh. We can just append this with content. Mesh data sets up mesh. Oh, this is insane. Oh. This is a bunch of code. Hmm. Vertex count. Sure. And then we have a double derp, which we shouldn't have, I don't think. Or maybe we do need. Definitely not. I don't understand this. Bounds equal bounds. It's a measure. And then we open something up here. Bounds equal bounds. Vertex count. Okay, vertex, this is clearly some sort of array. Set submesh. Oh, set submesh. This is a set method. So it makes something completely new. Apparently. All right. And this is where it ends. Hmm. Sure. How does it look there? Oh, this looks horrible. But, but just because I never wrote this kind of code before. It's crazy, you have this and then, no, whatever. Good, and we have to explicitly instruct Unity to not calculate these values itself by passing mesh update flags. Don't recalculate bounds as a third argument to set submesh. Oh. Really? Oh. So the array here is an argument. <laughs> um, good. That's completely unreadable. Yeah, nobody knows what's going on here. I can promise you. <laughs> now there's maybe three people in the world who knows what has gone on here. And I'm not one of them. All right, don't recognize really bounds, smash update flags. Good, we can use the same bounds for the entire mesh by assigning to its bounds property as well. Good. By assigning to its bounds property as well. Bounds, bounds. Into the mesh. Into the mesh we go. 
good. Whatever you say. Reducing vertex size. Oof. When can we test there? Reduce vertex size. Ideally, the vertex data is kept as small as possible. Uh, both to reduce memory pressure and also to improve GPU caching. Default font use for vertex with vertex at root font. Blah, blah, blah. Because our mesh is so simple, we don't need this much precision. Don't we? Let's reduce the tangent and texture coordinate format to have precision to half precision by passing vertex attribute format float 16 as a new second argument. The other two arguments then no longer need to be named. Uh -huh. uh, sure. Vertex attributes 2. Vertex attributes 2. Where might they be? Text attributes here. Good. Oh yeah, and make a multi-line code out of this. So it's definitely not readable. Um vertex vertex attribute tangent. Oh so we don't have to tell it dimension, right? Yeah, we don't have to, we don't need the named ones. Because we we squished in the argument that was expected. Wow, I understand something. That is a new one. That is a brand new one. Good. Put it in and we're gonna say two and three for those. This is what here? Vertex attributes. Huh. <laughs> I don't even know what exactly this defines. We also have to adjust our code that sets these values so it uses the half type. Good. This isn't a native C sharp type, which means that there isn't support for mathematical operations for this type. Instead, we have to convert the final values from full to half via the half method. All right, we do that. Native array, where we're we configuring our native arrays. In the vertices, in the normals, and in the tangents, and in the UV. Good. Let's do the tangents first. Um, here. Oops. Is this correct? Half, half, half. Uh, kind of. Good. So this is a half four then. Right. And after the tangent three, we no longer need the floats. Good, let's get rid of them. Half H2 equals Half H2 equals what? Half something, half something. Da, 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 da. Where do I have this from? Half zero F. Did I get this from somewhere else? Half four. Oh, oh, this is a line of code that needs to go up there. All right. Sure. Native array have four tangents. Half, half, zero equals that there. <sighs> I have no idea what this song is. It's just different data types. We're not using floats anymore. That's how I uh, explain this to myself. Half four equals half four h one h zero h zero and half something. 
Good. Parentheses. And out. Good. And the other native array from the texture coordinates dun, 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 is a half to. Good. So that means no more floats. Well, the tangents. The vertices are still floats, probably. Good, but this is H0. This is a half. And the designator comes before the number for some reason. Oh, because it's a method? I have no clue. Good, half 2, H. Da -da -da -da. Good. Half 2, H. Bu -bu -bu -bu. And H1. Good. Did we miss anything? Of course. Good. 69. Da, 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 da. Huh? Do you have something expected? Hmm. This is over here somewhere. Variable bounds, new bounds. 69 expects something mesh data sets up mesh new descriptor trying account mm-hmm Bounce, cycle bounce. What am I missing? Assets such as zero six expected. Sixty nine, seventy two, seventy one, seventy two. But it is there. Let's put it all in one line then. Da -da -da. That's going to be so wrong. Ah, wait a minute. So you want you want one here? That's why I had two of them. I, I don't think so. Error expected. Sixty nine still. Uh huh. There is something missing. Definitely. What do you have there? Oh, the parenthesis curly braces is inside. Curly braces is inside. Oh no, that doesn't work at all. Maybe now. And why do we have a parenthesis? Mm, I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> Doesn't matter how I, re how I write it up. I cannot read it anyhow. Good. I uh, cannot uh, converge. Where's this forty six? Cannot implicitly native array. Get rid of set a float. Hmm. Cannot implicitly convert type unit creation native array. The unit creation native array unit mathematics have four. Float to have four. Good. That actually makes sense. You shouldn't. You shouldn't natively convert this. Or implicitly. Implicitly. There is no need. Wonderful. So what is this now? Does this do anything? Of course not. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. This looked different there for a moment. Are we somewhat bigger? Oh yeah, we are. Because there's still the bigger numbers there. Good. Wonderful. But this has been two hours. Um, I think as a first session, this is good. The next tutorial is very great. But should we not finish up the tutorial? No. We're going to finish this up next time. Wonderful. I'm going to leave this as is. And I can easily remember where we're at. Good. Crazy pants. But yeah. More sessions to follow. We're going to learn the Unity. We're going to learn how to hack the Unity. Not learn the Unity, how the other people learn the Unity. By just having this uh, simple thingy there. Simple procedure mesh. And then... Um, having these lines of code, but running into problems later on. Going to do it right from the beginning. And have this wall of text. But I'm going to be better off in the long run. That is the hopes. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for chiming in. And I'm going to see you tonight when it's time for the uh, fantastic Hitman, The World of Assassination. Don't know if you like that kind of thing. But I'm definitely going to stream it on a PlayStation 4. So no chat, no nothing. And don't forget my free video spin giveaway on the first of the month. Where there's a chance to win a PlayStation 5 from a partner in the all Until then, have a good day and a good night.